Hi guys and assalamu alaikum welcome to my new blog post blog post 11 and in this blog post I am going to discuss about dimensions uh, like what actually the dimension table is there will be two parts uh, one would be the theory and second would be the like more practical format like what uh, how we can actually visualize the dimension tables in the power bi so let's start so let's start with the basic theory like what actually is the dimension table so when we talk about the dimension table uh, we mean it means like it's a table that actually uh, contains the descriptive information for which uh, which can be utilized to slice and dice the data uh, on uh, from the fact table yeah, of the, or the effect table so basically uh, there are two keywords over here like slides and dice these are the keyword keywords and these are the actions that are required to be performed on the data and what kind of a data like it's gonna be like our fact table data so later on in the next block i will give you an insight about the fact table but let us keep ourselves uh, towards the dimension table so uh, since i have said like uh, it is kind of like uh, like there is a descriptive information uh, in the dimension table and in the following image I am showcasing a dimension of the product table. So basically um, this table contains our uh, descriptive information and which we will use for slicing and dicing, dicing in future. So uh, these fields can be of any data type like these, these fields can actually contain uh, data type uh of like text date time and even a number uh, and or even a number right so here is the product and product table and here is a product column so it contains a descriptive uh, information over here then there is a standard cost like it's contain a dollar information uh, then there is a color and then there is a list price uh, column coming up here which is again a uh, money or uh, dollar information then there is a model and it's a descriptive information and uh, textual information then there is there are further like subcategories category and sku's so there is a lot of information over here but most of them most of it is actually of type text but we can have uh, integers as well in this table but the main key to understand the dimension table is like you should know this like it contains a descriptive information like uh, uh, like it, there should be a non aggregated information should be placed over here with respect to the uh, dimension we are talking about or the dimension which is actually under consideration so uh, for example if i would say like i would like to see the product uh, uh, sales amount so i can't actually put that kind of information over here for that i need a uh, fact table uh, right so let's move on so uh, before moving on further i would like to give you a very key concept about uh, uh, surrogate keys like what are actually uh, surrogate keys so basically when we talk about uh, surrogate keys we talk actually uh, we talk about like uh, a primary key as well so this is surrogate is something uh, it's a, it is something which actually comes up when uh, you have a primary key but it is actually not a primary key so let's see like how it can it could be possible like if you if there's a key but you actually think that it's not going to be a primary key so let's suppose like we have a credit card table and we have three columns like credit card number holder name and expiry date so the credit card number is basically a unique number for its holder name right so it could be a very uh, good primary key but we know that it is quite possible like due to the expiry date the uh, one holder may have multiple credit card numbers coming in so here the duplication is actually coming so we need to break that kind of information for this we need to create a surrogate key and that surrogate key which will actually act like a primary key in the dimension table so the answer would be like i will create a automated 
primary key over here. Uh, normally it is number or you can actually add something else as well and assign that surrogate key as a primary key. And this, this will actually work uh, as your primary key in your data model of the Power BI. And this is how you can actually handle the surrogate keys, uh, sorry, uh, primary keys uh, in the dimension tables. So uh, further moving on, there are uh, two uh, concepts that are actually required to be understood with respect to the dimension tables. Uh, first one is like dimension tables are basically wide. So this is quite, this is like a golden rule to remember, like while you are designing the dimension tables, uh, you should make them wide. Like you can actually extend the columns as much as you want. Like you need to add the fields that are actually related to your table. More fields in the dimension table means like more power for slicing and dicing the data. And if you have like, like just like, like three fields of a customer, first name, last name, and gender are like, uh, here it is like customer, city, state, province, uh, something like that. Like, so it means you can actually slice and dice data by these three. However, if you have like customer table with more columns, like I have shown, you have more power in slicing and dicing. So uh, let us assume that you have a table like, like in which you have only first three columns. So consider like city, state, province, uh, currency region and postal code is not present at the moment. So when you will actually try to slice and dice the data with respect to the customer, you can actually uh, you can actually slice and dice it with respect to the customer only, not with respect to the other values like city, state, province, country, region, or the postal code. So you can't just do that. Uh, but if I introduce it like with respect to time, like after the customer, I introduce a column like city, and after the city, I state, I add state province, and then I add country region. I have more power for slicing and dicing. So I can go uh, go on further, uh, move further and further, and I will have more granular level to achieve. Another thing is like uh, custom dimension tables should be shallow. So why they are required to be shallow? They should not have uh, many rows. They are actually often less than a million row. However, there are always uh, some kind of exceptions. Uh, so uh, for example, if you talk about like Instagram or Twitter, so they will have like more than a million customer or billion uh, customer in their uh, table, but uh, it's a exception. So uh, basically if you have few uh, values in the dimension tables with respect to your huge database uh, uh, database. So uh, that would be a great good. Like you can have a faster uh, visuals uh, to play with, all right? So this is something about the dimension table, which is actually, I have talked about uh, some key theory about it. Now let's move on towards some practical. So I have downloaded Adventure Works Data Warehouse 2020 from the Microsoft website. And this is pre-built data source for the Adventure Works. So I can actually, uh, I have uh, a basically a main sales table, which is actually a fact table. And then there are dimension tables. And this is actually built on the star schema. So, uh, we have multiple tables like sales order, product, uh, reseller, date, customer, and sales territory. Uh, and these are basically dimension tables. And in right in the middle is basically our fact table. So let's move on towards like our data as well. So uh, let me open the customer table. So I have lots of information over here, right? So I have various cities, I have customers, uh, I have states, regions, and there's a lot of data that is actually coming up right now. So uh, let's move on towards another dimension, for example, date. When I click on the date, I have like date key, date, fiscal year, 
fiscal quarter, months, month key, full data. So I can actually slice and dice the data of the fact table, which is sales with respect to these uh, descriptive columns. Like if I would like to see on the date of uh, 7 1 2019, how many customers were there for some kind of average sale. So I can actually, I actually utilize this information to get the data from the fact table. So there, so there are five dimensions and there are uh, around about like 30 columns and one fact table. So I can actually see 30, uh, diff 30 factorial kind of like information in, in my visuals. So we can, I can actually build a lots of visuals by just utilizing this data. But right now, let us uh, see how we can actually see the dimensions while we are actually utilizing the reports. So let's suppose I have, I just only want to create a stack bar chart. So I have just clicked on it and it is dragged over here. I just expand it over here so I can actually get a good glimpse of my visual. Now let's see, like I would like to see uh, city wise, like I would like to see the city in the dimension, but right now here, this is, there's something which is not coming. So I need to have some kind of information from our tech table as well. So I just click on the sales and I, and let's see, like, uh, we have okay one okay so there was a bit of problem in my visual data so all the fields were actually hidden so i just had to unhide hide them all so it took me some time bit of time so let's see like i would like to see the city wise data right and I have, I would like to see the order quantity that is actually there. So you can see the column that I have selected the city column. So right now I am slicing and dicing the order quantity with respect to the cities, right? So I can also add like, what if I would like to see the sales amount? So I just only need to click on the sales and now I can see the sales by city amount, right? So how about like, if I would like to see the city and the customers as well. So right now I'm actually getting the data with respect to the city, uh, city and customer. So right now I am actually, I am having sales here in the Y axis and then I have uh, cities over here. And the, since the data is quite huge, uh, there is a little bit of information about like, uh, like there will be dots about the customers here uh, in this video right now, they are not present. Uh, so through this, you can actually play around with the dimension table and you can actually, uh, get as much as amount of visual that you would like to have. So hopefully you have understood the concept and uh, about the dimension tables. And thanks for watching my video. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share my YouTube channel, Yasser Fazal. And please do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you should get the latest video as soon as it is uploaded. And as always, please spread the knowledge. Thank you.